What is up, you guys? It is me again. I pierced my lips again because I missed it. I missed them. Um, but not again myself. It, it. This is the last time I'm having it. If I take them out again, if they heal over, then guess what's going to happen? I'm not piercing them again. It stung way too bad. They Sticking a 14-gauge needle through my lip. It stung. Let me tell you, it really stung. And, um... Also, these little ball studs. Um... To screw them on the studs took me, like, an hour. Almost. Because I had to look in the mirror and the mirrors are deceiving, you know? Um... And you had to, um... You have to move them back. Like, when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, putting them in, you have to, um move them like the opposite way or something like that than you do when you're not looking in the mirror or it looks like I can't really explain it looks like it's going the opposite way or whatnot and it's just and it's at just a little bit of a tilted direction and it's very difficult for uh even though I was wearing cotton gloves so that the sweat on my hands wouldn't make the ball um fall out it still fell out and you have to hold it like this and did like this, like it is a nightmare. So, whew. I'm getting. The, I'm gonna get them done professionally. If I again, if I uh, remove them, because that, that just that hurts. That hurt. And professionals, what they do is they shove it through your lip, and you can't. It goes so fast, you barely feel anything. So, um, but this hurt. Let me tell you, I just stick it in like in, like that, and like. Push, 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 push. Because I I'm scared to do it. Just shove it really quickly. I, I'm, I'm scared to do that. Um, I don't know why, but I am. So never not doing this again. So forgive me, God, please. Um, so the gifts and the ministries of the Holy Spirit by Lester Sumrall. I got this at Publix a couple months ago. And, um, it's, a, I've only read, I think it's a good book. I don't read that much, so, but I wanted to get this, so, uh, number 19 is the first chapter after the introduction Nature and Role of the Holy Spirit To accurately study the work of the Holy Spirit, we must begin with the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1-11 through 11 includes a list of the works of the Holy Spirit, which are the gifts of the Spirit. But in the book of Genesis, we see the Holy Spirit introduced in uh, pristine grandeur and an exciting and thrilling display of the role of the Holy Spirit. In the very first verses of the Bible, we read, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1-3. through I want to see what the earth looked like without a form. So I guess it just, it was, an, it was invisible. The functioning of the Holy Spirit as demonstrated in the early churches or early Christian church is not new. He had been working with human beings for 4,000 years. Holy Spirit is a he, not an it. So careful if you think or careful if you have referred to the Holy Spirit as an it before. He had been working with human beings for 4,000 years prior to the Christian era and he has been working in the church for the 2,000 years since the Holy Spirit has been very busy functioning on behalf of mankind for 6,000 years. He knows our problems. He knows the answers. And we need these answers from him. Omnipotence of the Spirit. When we think of the functioning of the Holy Spirit in the creation of the world, 
we think of the of omnipotence. The Holy Spirit was omnipotent or all powerful. Out of the chaos that existed in the beginning, he brought cosmos. God spoke and his word had been obeyed. The Spirit of God moved upon the des- desolation, and there came forth that which was beautiful for God and for men. Omnipresence of the Spirit. In his creative powers, the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. In his universe, un- universality, he is omnipresent. Psalm uh, chapter 139, verse 7 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Here David was saying to God, Where could I go to escape the presence of your spirit? It is impossible to flee from the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen to that. Perhaps you found that to be true when you were running away from your convictions. God dogged you, quote, quote, unquote, until he got you, and he can do it again and again. Amen. That means uh, when you're feeling conviction, he puts it on your heart. He tugs your heart saying, you're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong until you can't take it anymore. And you come back to God. The Holy Spirit is universal in the fulfilling of his operations. He possesses all power and he is everywhere. There is no place that the gifts of the Holy Spirit will not work. They will function anywhere, whether it is in Asia, South America, Europe, or right where you are now. Nature and the role of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, we, we find that God said in words of convicting strength and power that his spirit would not always strive with man. The Holy Spirit strives to bring man into a place of reconciliation with God. Imagine that work happening from Genesis and continuing through Revelation. The Holy Spirit has a fullness of ministry whose chief exercise is the cause to uh, cause men to come to God. Sorry, I'm reading this from an angle. Jesus, in, uh, in speaking to us of the functionings of the Holy Spirit, told us that the Holy Spirit would be a comfort to us and that he would relate the things he has heard in the heavens. He would express those things you say to God and then tell you what God says in reply. It is the Holy Spirit who moves back and forth, bringing communication from our hearts to God and from God's heart to us. He is accustomed to striving with men's heart. When you feel within you a craving and a desire to be more like God and to live a holy life, that is the moving and the functioning of the Holy Spirit on your behalf. Nice. Poured out upon all flesh. I'm just going to read that part though. So, uh, this is good right here. Um, the gifts and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Enjoy.